Então, uh, bom dia a todos. Uh, é um prazer estar aqui com vocês hoje para apresentar o professor Isaac Adedara, da Universidade de Ibadã, na Nigéria. Então, o professor Isaac está uh, se juntando ao nosso grupo aqui na UFSM e o objetivo desse seminário é tanto apresentar a universidade para que os alunos daqui da UFSM conheçam um pouco da Universidade de Ibadã e dos cursos que existem nessa universidade, quanto também a linha de pesquisa do professor Isaac. Uh, então, é, esse evento e toda a organização é uma promoção do Programa de Pós-Graduação em Ciência e Tecnologia de Alimentos, daqui da Universidade Federal de Santa Maria. Uh, e, antes de passar a palavra para o nosso convidado, o professor Isaac, eu vou uh, fazer uma pequena apresentação do currículo do professor Isaac. Então, o professor Isaac ele é professor do Departamento de Bioquímica uh, e foi subchefe uh, uh, do curso de graduação uh, da universidade, do curso de graduação em Bioquímica, na Faculdade de uh, Ciências uh, Médicas, Uh, na Universidade de Ibadã. Uh, ele também fez pós-doutorado na Universidade de Albur, nos Estados Unidos, e também aqui na Universidade Federal de Santa Maria, já. Uh, ele trabalha, tem experiência numa série de ferramentas de biologia molecular, uh, incluindo uh, ensaios enzimáticos espectrofotométricos, western blotting, uh, ensaios do tipo ELISA, e o uso desses, uh, dessas ferramentas para elucidar mecanismos do efeito uh, tóxico de compostos e uh, aplicações na, uh, biomédicas. Uh, o professor uh, Adedara, ele tem uh, expertise em toxicologia e mais de 100 trabalhos científicos publicados em periódicos uh, internacionais. É membro do uh, corpo editorial do Journal of Biochemical and Molecular Toxicology uh, e, e teve recentemente aqui na UFSM com uma bolsa jovem talento com experiência no exterior junto ao programa CAPSPRINT, Uh, no projeto Estratégias uh, Farmacológicas e Nutricionais para a Promoção da Saúde, que é o projeto do qual o Programa de Pós-Graduação em Ciência e Tecnologia de Alimentos participa, juntamente com outros programas de pós-graduação daqui da UFSM. Uh, então, é um prazer. It's a, a, our pleasure to receive you, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Adedara. Um, have a nice lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, good morning. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Um, this morning, I'll be talking about, uh, there will be two presentations. The first one is on the about University of Ibadan in Nigeria, where I lecture in the Department of Biochemistry, and I believe that uh, you will find it interesting and educative. Thank you. So, as rightly said, I'm Isaac Adida, a visiting professor in UFSM. Yes, I'm from Nigeria, and most of the time people confuse Nigeria with Africa. They are different things. We have Africa as a continent, it's a big continent, one of the continents in the world, and we have Nigeria a country. So when people talk about Nigeria, it's referring to a country and not a continent. So it's in Nigeria that we have um, University of Ibadan. And University of Ibadan is located in uh, the western part of Nigeria, which is close to Lagos, the former capital of Nigeria. This current capital of Nigeria is uh, Abuja. So University of Ibadan is uh, located in Ibadan. My university, which is University of Ibadan, was formerly referred to as University College Ibadan. And it was founded in 1948, precisely November 17. And up to today, when we are graduating PhD students, we graduate them on that day, November 17th. That is when we do the graduation for PhD uh, graduates. And the foundation was laid uh, by Autumn Craig Jones, which happened to be the British Secretary for State for the colonies, because we were, Nigeria was colonized by British. And so, um, the university was originally created as an extension of University of London. So there is so much similarity between the University of London 
and University of Ibadan. When it was created, it, was the, or it is the oldest university in Nigeria. So it's about 74 years old, and um, we still maintain the standard the British has given to us. Now, it is a federally controlled public uh, uh, university, uh, as I said, located in Ibadan, in Oyo State, just like you have Rio Grande do Sul, that is the state. So we have Oyo State, that is the state where University of Ibadan is located. And it is the only institution that was established before the independence of Nigeria. Nigeria got our independence in 1960, and I believe that was when the UFSM was uh, established. So I see it on the crest, 1960. So UFSM was created or was established when Nigeria got uh, independent. So it means that the uh, University of Ibadan was created 12 years before our independence. And so the University of, uh, University of Ibadan motto is Rector's Supply of Fund, meaning for knowledge and sound judgment. That is the motto, the slang, I mean the, the, the motto for the University of Ibadan. And currently in Nigeria, we have about 170 universities. We have 79 states, I mean 79 private universities, 43 are federal, and 48 are state universities. Um, the University of Ibadan um, has about two campuses. Basically, the main campus is um, located, uh, is one that houses most of the faculties in the department and in the university. And as you can see, this is the gate. There are two gates, the entrance and the one for the uh, exit. And uh, there is an ivory tower, there is a tower there. This is the only university in Nigeria that have this tower with a clock. So once you enter into the University of Ibadan, you see the time, whether you are leaving or you are entering. And uh, we have the medical college, that is the College of Medicine, where we have the, uh, the academic activity takes place in the College of Medicine, and then you have the University Teaching Hospital, just as we have the University Teaching Hospital in the UFSM. So University of Ibadan became independent in uh, 1962. That is, it attained its full-fledged autonomy. That was the time it broke the ties between University of London and uh, it was able to stand alone. And today, it's an autonomous university standing on its own. And there are about 92 academic departments in the university. The university has about 41,743 students with a total staff strength of 5,339. And as you can see, we have the postgraduate student, I mean postgraduate college. This is the building, I mean, for the, uh, for the administration of all postgraduate students of the programs, whether the master's degree or PhD, another program that are related to post, I mean, to postgraduate training. So this is the center for it. We have the postgraduate college. And uh, we have a central university, although faculties also have their own uh, library, the, uh, the department, they have their own library, but this is a central. The central university is about four floors. We have four floors, and it's named after the first Nigerian vice president, and um, vice, uh, vice chancellor of the university. So it's Kennedy K, and it was established in 1948. And, um, in the university, we have about 16 faculties, and these are the ones that house, uh, the faculties are the ones that house the program, the 92 programs. We have the Faculty of Art, Faculty of Science, Faculty of Basic Medical Sciences, Clinical Sciences, Faculty of Agriculture, Faculty of Social Sciences, Faculty of Education, Faculty of Vet Medicine, Faculty of Pharmacy, Faculty of Technology, Law, Public Health, Dentistry, Economics, Renewable Natural Resources, and Environmental Design. So the vision of my university, University of Ibadan, is to actually have to be a world-class um, institution for academic excellence that is geared towards meeting the societal needs. In order to meet the society, uh, the needs in the society, the university has to uh, conduct a lot of 
teachings and research to be able to find solutions to problems that are happening in the society. And uh, in the graduation, we have University of Ibadan produces an average of 3,000 masters to graduate in a year, and uh, for PhD, an average of 400 PhD students. So they are the ones that graduate. And uh, because of that, because University of Ibadan is the first and the best, it is fondly, it is commonly referred to as the mother of universities in Nigeria. Because most of the graduates, most of the people we turn up postgraduate students, they take up appointments in different universities. All the universities that I said about uh, uh, 170 uh, universities in Nigeria, so minus one, we have 169. Most graduates in University of Ibadan are the ones that are lecturing in most of those universities. So, and here we see the, this lady was the first uh, graduating student in the first class without any, uh, with CGPA that is I, the highest CGPA in those days. And then this is the uniform for PhD students we have read and the vice chancellor. That is the rector in UFSM. We give them an handshake. All right. So concerning ranking in University of Ibadan, the Times Higher Educational World Ranking, which is a, a British uh, a ranking organization, ranked University of Ibadan in 19, I mean 2016, between uh, 601 to 800. In 2017, 801,000. So there was a poor performance, I guess, in two, 2017 and 2018. But subsequently, 2019, the university started improving. And in 2021, we were ranked between two, 401 to 500. And in 2022, as we are, the ranking of the university in global ranking, that is overall in the world, the uh, University of Ibadan is between 401 to 500. And regional, that is in Africa, we have six position, we are in, occupying the sixth position, but nationally in Nigeria, we are occupying the first position according to Times Higher Education. And in 2022, okay, in, 20, in 2022, um, the ranking of the University of Ibadan, I mean, is, as I said, is sixth in position but in Africa, you can see a University of Cape Town, located in South Africa, Stellenbosch in South Africa, University of Cape Coast, located in Ghana, followed by University of Kwasunilata, South Africa, then University of Nigeria, occupying the sixth position. In Africa, like I said, is a continent, but Nigeria is a country. The next country, I mean the next uh, university to University of Ibadan in Nigeria, occupies the tenth position. So showing you the gap between the University of Ibadan and the other university. Now I will talk about my department. I'm from the Department of Biochemistry. And the um, Department of Biochemistry was uh, fully established in 1960 with a professor, with Professor Basia. That is Olube Basia as the founder and also the head of the department. It was the one that uh, established it. Although the university, I mean, the biochemistry department had been established jointly with a physiology department, but in 1960, it was uh, autonomous. It became a full department. And this is the picture of the old man, and uh, he's late now. And uh, he was a biochemist with interest in nutritional biochemistry. His passion was in nutrition. And this is the building of uh, the Department of Biochemistry. This building is the old building. Then we have the new building. And suddenly we have an extension. So it occupies a very big place, I mean, the Department of Biochemistry. And um, in the training of undergraduates, there are, because our department, Department of Biochemistry, is a servicing department, there are numerous departments that we teach. And, uh, most of them are listed here. We have the medical student, both uh, the MBBS and BDA, that is dentistry. The, uh, 
We have physiology, we have human nutrition and dietetics, we have environmental health sciences, we have biomedical laboratory science, physiotherapy, pharmacy, microbiology, and biochemistry students. These are the department or the students that we teach. So we have a lot of uh, work to do in the university, especially in the department of biochemistry. And then regarding postgraduate training, the department is divided into four broad academic uh, sections. There are four sections in the department. We have cancer research and molecular biology. We have membrane biochemistry and biotechnology. We have molecular drug metabolism and toxicology, and then nutritional and industrial biochemistry. These are the four units that the postgraduate training in the Department of Biochemistry, uh, I mean, they are, I mean, they are responsible for the teaching of the students. And um, in this four, um, four units, we have directors. That is, we have coordinator, the director that oversee the affairs of the, the, of the, of the units. And then we have the head of, uh, head of department. So currently, we have uh, Professor Adaramoye as the head of department. Then we have Professor E.O. Farumbi, that is the Director of Molecular Drug Metabolism and Toxicology. We have Professor Yeronke Odrola as a Cancer Research and Molecular Biology. And presently, he has taken the position of the Dean of the Faculty. So she is the current Dean of the Faculty. And then we have the Professor C.O. Olaya, the Nutrition and Industrial Biochemistry. Then the Director for Membrane Biochemistry and Biotechnology, Professor and uh, so these are the directors that oversee the affair of the units and relay or communicate with the head of department if there is any action or activity to be done now the essence of the unit is to be able for proper training so when student comes into the department they find the depart or the unit they are interested in. If a postgraduate student should be admitted, right from your application, you will indicate that, oh, I'm interested in coming to cancer research and molecular biology. I'm interested in coming to membrane biochemistry and uh, biotechnology. These are the things that we do in the, during admission. So when you come, the essence, I mean, the, what they do in cancer research and molecular biology is the assessment of toxicity whether majorly hepatotoxicity, genotoxicity, and clastro, uh, clastogenicity of environmental agents and the possible chemo prevention of these um, and remediation for the toxicity using natural products. So uh, we see we provide uh, alternative, uh, like um, generation of new drugs that will help in cancer um, chemo prevention. And also in membrane biochemistry and biotechnology, their focus is on mitochondrial bioenergetics and, envir of, uh, and environmental contaminants. They look at the role of uh, apoptosis, role of uh, mitochondrial apoptosis in, uh, in uh, diseases. And so they are, uh, they are also involved in providing remedy or chemo protection against such uh, adverse effects. And so we we move to molecular drug metabolism and toxicology. Where is my own uh, area of specialization? I belong to the molecular drug metabolism and toxicology. So is the modulation of xenobiotic induced toxicity, that is environmental pollutant, toxicant drugs, the toxicity they induce, and the way to ameliorate or to abate even the toxicity via uh, assessments, maybe through cellular oxidative stress, damage to the DNA. We use um, bioactive compounds even to mitigate or to attenuate the, danger, I mean, the, the deleterious effect of this. And of course, the bioactive compounds must have certain uh, activity which involve uh, whether antioxidant, inflammatory, or anti carcinogenic activity. Then lastly, we have nutritional and industrial biochemistry. Basically, the focus on biochemistry of food processing and preservation, about biofortification of food in order to improve human health via plant homo technology. And lastly, the career biochemical role of active common in diabetics and hypertension. In the training of our postgraduate students, we 
have some courses they need to take, especially in, at master's level. We have seven, we call biochemistry bike 701, which has to do with general biochemistry. Like I said, the University of Ibadan is involved in training of many students in order to produce them, especially people that want to be in academics, to go to other universities to establish them. I mean, so if you have students coming from other universities, coming to take master degree in University of Ibadan, the first he has to understudy the general biochemistry because we believe that possibly they have been taught by students that we train and we, the mother, we have to retrain them. So we train them, we give them general knowledge of our chemistry, and we have membrane, the units, the four units, we have to introduce all of them. They have general knowledge. So if somebody is coming in as a student, master student in biochemistry, we have to, the student have to be taught all the uh, courses involved in the four departments. So that by the time you graduate, you have knowledge of all the four sections be it nutrition, oncology, uh, membrane biochemistry, or drug toxicology. So, I mean, drug metabolism and toxicology. You have general knowledge. But the difference, majorly, is the difference is your research. So, we have general knowledge theoretically, but in terms of project, execution of project, you do project related to the unit where you have applied to. So we have xenobiochemistry, environmental, I mean, environmental and experimental oncology, molecular biology with their respective unit, the seminar presentation, we have um, biostatistics, and lastly, the project. So like I said, it's the project that differentiates you from other students. You sit down together to learn all the courses, but your project will be in your area of interest. That's what we do in University of Ibarra. Now, specifically concerning nutrition, because it's related to food science and technology, we, the students in nutrition, I mean, generally students are taught, but specifically in nutrition, they deal with mechanism and or nutrition related to diseases. First, what is the role of nutrition in infection, in uh, improvement of immunity against infection? So we teach them that. Then nutrition and drug metabolism, what is the role of nutrition in the drug metabolism? Does it aid metabolism or decreases metabolism? Then we look at nutrition and toxicology. Can, is it possible for nutrition, I mean, to nutrients or diet uh, containing compound to be toxic? Yes, we, of course, we know that some compounds are found in diet that may be toxic, like uh, uh, aflatoxin, like uh, when we talk about food contaminants. So we look at toxicology in that aspect. Or how we toxicant? I mean, toxicant induced toxicity, be prevented by bioactive components. So in toxicology, we deal with that. We see toxic, uh, toxic, uh, toxicity of environmental contaminant, and at the same time, see how we can prevent or protect against the toxins that are induced by uh, the environmental contaminant via or through the administration of bioactive compounds. We have nutrition and carcinogenesis, whatever is responsible for cancer. Then we see how bioactive components of diet can reduce or prevent such uh, initiation or occurrence of cancer, and then nutrition and mem uh, membrane function. Then also, in recent advances, recent advances in nutrition, we do advance in nutraceuticals, functional and medical foods for people that are recovering in the hospital. That is a special food we need to give them to make them to recover fast. We have nutritional rules of dietary fibers, novel sources of protein, that is alternative sources of protein. We have food contaminants. What are those food contaminants? Are they being removed? How do you make our food to be safe, food safety? Then we have genetically modified foods, functional food science and cardiovascular system. When there is a problem in the system, do we have food or diet that can actually pre prevent uh, renal dysfunction. We have food science and substrate metabolism. We have food function, uh, move fu uh, functional food science and defense against uh, reactive oxygen uh, species. So um, this particular slide is very important because it has to do with association or uh, the impact of um, UFSM on University of Ibadan. In, um, precisely in the 2012, 
one of our faculties in the Department of Biochemistry, and particularly in my unit, Drug Metabolism and Toxicology, Professor Abolaji, Amos Abolaji, was a recipient of TWAS and uh, CPNQ uh, in 2012, and he was here. He was in the, this is the professor, and he was received by Professor Joao Batista Rocha, and um, during, the four, uh, during the one year, he used Drosophila, was the first person to use Drosophila in this, I mean, from Nigeria. And today, what we are seeing the impact is that the Drosophila laboratory has been established and many universities in Nigeria, through the Department of Biochemistry and this Drosophila uh, laboratory, are now, they now have their own Drosophila laboratory. So we could see the impact, the technology transfer from UFSM to University of Ibadan. Now, in order, because of time, I want to talk about some of the publications from our department. I mean, generally, not my own, I'm going to talk about my own later, but I want to talk about other units, the four units altogether. So the first one talked about cis ginger oil. It's a phytochemical, it's a bioactive compound, how it's involved in the delay of tumorigenesis in colorectal cancer using the mice as a model. And um, we see the effect of uh, colilo uh, pilosa supplementation on diabetic crack. So you can see that we in University of Ibadan, we make use of uh, f uh, bioactive compounds in, the, in the investigation is being carried out on bioactive compounds and their effect in the disease conditions, like you see in diabetes. And this one, the first one talked about caffeic acid, how it protects against DNA damage, oxidative strain, inflammatory, uh, mediated toxicity. So by aflatoxin. So we could see, and one important thing about this compound, I mean about this paper, is that aflatoxin is present in food, and at the same time you have caffeic acid also present in food. It means that when you take combination of some food, it is, it, 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 is, uh, it is possible that the beneficial aspect of the, of the diet can mitigate the toxic component of the diet. So if you are taking diet, you may be uh, having a toxic effect being neutralized by the bioactive compound. The same thing, this is a diabetic uh, cancer, I mean, campus mice. Now here also, we see this is an environmental contaminant, cadmium and nickel. Co-exposure induces genotoxicity. It is exacerbated, that is, their combination, worsening individual toxicity. But we can see that there is a protective role of omega-3 fatty acid in food that can mitigate it. So telling us that dietary uh, substances, especially bioactive compounds, they have impact on preserving or protecting the structural integrity of the body or health, they have health benefits by mitigating the impact of environmental contaminants. And this is arsenic being mitigated by the, comp uh, by the extra. Now here again we see another compound, protocatequid acid, uh, is, uh, is beneficial in the uh, uh, castrated eye, when you say benign prostate hyperplexia. So, we can see that another dietary product involved in this. And at the same time, Coleranda proto uh, I have mitigated the tumorigenic effect. This is a breast cancer, uh, experimental model of breast cancer using a rat. So we could see that um, the protocol, I mean, the, uh, the bioactive compound in the fraction mitigated against such. Now, another thing is plumber gene. This is uh, from membrane. This is a plumber gene that uh, was able to induce, I mean, was able to prevent, a, induce a mitochondria dependent cell death in, uh, in rat model. And uh, the same thing, we have inhibition of mitochondria membrane permeability transition pore by quercetin and vitamin E. Using vitamin E and quercetin to mitigate the effect of that in diabetic rat. Then we have, in drosophila, we have a protective role of resveratrol in red wine, so to mitigate the effect of fluoride. Fluoride, we are, 
exposed to flora as a contaminant or even present in toothpaste. So when there is an excess exposure to fluoride, it, we know fluoris, uh, fluorosis and all that kind of uh, dysfunction in the body. So consumption of resveratrol, red wine, can protect against such damage in the body. So we use drosophila as a model. And also using drosophila as a model, we prevent, I mean, the administration of Garcinia cola by flavonoids, which is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, uh, is a flavonoid from Garcinia cola. It is a, loca is a locally consumed uh, seed in Nigeria, but now I think, it's, in fact, it was recommended during the COVID-19 as one of the uh, seed that when consumed, we prevent people from having uh, COVID-19. It has been uh, tested, I mean, not uh, clinically, but I mean, people that consume it, they survive such uh, the pandemic. Now, uh, monosodium glutamate is another uh, uh, food and supplement as an additive, but with, uh, in the department, the impact on cell membrane was also tested, and the fraction of this, how we are able to use uh, plant extract containing bioactive compound to mitigate the toxic effect in the, both in hepatic and uterine. Now we have tapping rich fractions that was used to mitigate even the infect, I mean, inflammation caused by lipopolysaccharide. And um, at the same time, recently, this is a recent paper, dietary myriacetin was used, or uh, was, uh, it was investigated to see the effect on uh, atrazine. Atrazine is an herbicide popularly used in uh, farm product, I mean, uh, crop production. So it's possible that during the administration of pesticides, we have residues either on the leaves or on the fruits. And because of processing, we may not be able to get, uh, processing may not be able to completely remove the residues on fruit. So if somebody takes residue through uh, dietary, I mean, food substances, somebody may be exposed to reproductive dysfunction. But miracetin, another component in a food, prevented against that. And this, uh, this paper is to check the impact of protocatechic acid on this is pure toxic, I mean, pure uh, to check the effect on uh, neonatal animals. And um, we're able to report that, that it improves that. And then lastly, we have colaviron, which is the compound that uh, the biflavonoid from Garcinia cola, able to mitigate is in carbon nanoparticles that, um, uh, that induce the testicular function. In conclusion, it is important to let us know that University of Ibadan is the leading federal university in Nigeria. It is popular, the popular slogan is that UI, whenever you say UI, people respond to say the first and the best. And then UI is committed to academic excellence. And lastly, UI strongly encourages academic mobility, staff development, and technology transfer to achieve its vision. Thank you. So I want to acknowledge the the PPGCTA for making me to be here as a visiting professor in the department. And previously, I've been in uh, biochemistry, uh, that is biochemistry department, at least. My four, I have two postdoctoral training in the university. The first is in Professor Rocha, when I used Drosophila and the cockroach. And then the second was when I came as a Joven Talento in the laboratory of uh, of my friend, and thank God he uh, is here. So, uh, Professor Dennis, so Rosenberg, and then C uh, uh, CMPQ, I want to thank TWOS, I want to thank KPIS, I want to thank Federal University of Santa Maria, then of course, my university and the college. Thank you. Thank you very much, Isaac, for your nice presentation. Um, I pergunto à plateia se alguém tem alguma pergunta. Se quiserem fazer em português, é possível, a gente traduz. Juliano. 
Eu vou te passar porque no YouTube a, o som pode ficar muito baixinho. Congratulations for a nice presentation. I would like to ask you about the regarding the the question of uh, startups like uh, the transfer of knowledge for the market if uh, which is the stage in the in your university of such kind of uh, of uh, 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 emprise or the, the kind of transfer to the market transfer of uh, the product to the market yes, yes. It's very important, but presently, presently, um, in the department, we have problem with communicating to to the market because of funding, and one of the problems that we have currently, even in Brazil, I mean in Nigeria, is if you go on online, is a kind of a face off between the professors in the university of um, in, in Nigerian university and the federal government because it's like a limitation there is no funding and they are saying that oh federal government you have to provide money make money available let our research product be made known to the public but is that they are dragging feet although there are some bodies there are some body foreign bodies that give grants to individual investigators and those people that are in that aspect area are being able to communicate to to the society so but we still need to we need, need the support of the federal government of nigeria to actually help the scientists to showcase their research findings so uh, that's what I can say. That is, we are improving, but it's not as we professors expect it to be. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. I think that this will be a very nice uh, topic for collaboration because here in Brazil, the, this uh, this uh, movement for the startups is 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 just starting, but it is growing very fastly. So I think that we can uh, make good collaboration in this to help you in Nigeria and collaborate. And uh, mais alguma questão, alguma Da plateia. I, I will tell you that, that I was very impressed with the numbers from Ibada University uh, because um, before you come here, I, I did not know that uh, Ibada was a so, so huge university. <laughs> it, it is even older and higher than uh, UFSM, and, and your scope of um, uh, of activities in the Department of Biochemistry, I think that, that they have um, good close with uh, our, yes, yes our um, scope of um, activities in the postgraduate program. So I think that it will be a nice collaboration. Thank you. So um, then we will, we will uh, be happy to hear about your um, yes. research line. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, Okay, I will change the slides. And just close it.
Okay, thank you once again. Uh, this time around, this time around, I'll be talking about uh, my area of uh, research and how it can be of benefit to UFSN specifically to food science and technology department. So I'll be talking about um, the broad team for the for this talk is the bioactive compounds and human health research. We want to connect Brazil to Nigeria. So based on my research activity, I'll be talking, I, I've been asked to select a particular topic, and the topic I've selected is biochemical and molecular mechanisms associated with dietary bioactive compounds in neuronal, colonic, and reproductive health. So as we know, bioactive compounds, namely carotenoids, uh, polyphenols, vitamins, omega-3 fatty acid, they are attracted a great attention because of their benefits in the chronic diseases. They have been of help. Both epidemiology studies and experimental studies have shown that these bioactive compounds have great impact, positive impact, health beneficial effect in human, both human and animals. So dietary compounds can act alone, is either a single administration or jointly. And you know that most of the time, you find these compounds, many of them together in fruits. So when we take apple and we consume, there are a lot of bioactive compounds that are found in apple. So simply showing that these bioactive compounds can act either singly or together to synergize their effect it's leading to pharmacological act effect. Now this is a picture that shows different fruits that um, we consume as human beings and the different phytochemicals. We have quercetin, cucumin, resveratrol, genistein, narigin, indotricabinone, sulforaphane, um, balchani A, luteolin, espiritin, gallic acid, and all. So many of them. So the list is endless. So meaning that by the time we take these fruits, we are gaining some um, uh, bioactive compounds to help in health. Now, I am a toxicologist, and the impact, I mean, the, my own focus is to actually look at how bioactive compounds can help in mitigating toxicity induced by environmental contaminants, and people or human beings get exposed to environmental uh, contaminant via gas flaring. You can see this is air pollution. Some people, by the time they take in this pollutant, it gets affected in different uh, organisms. And you can see this is there are two things that we need to learn from this picture. First, the detrimental effect of water contamination on animals. And secondly, these are animals that we take. That means sometimes if the animals are not, uh, are not killed, human beings can consume them, leading to transfer of this contaminant from the food, that is the diet, which is the animal that we consume. And we can see pollution, effluent being released, possibly maybe from uh, textile companies, pharmaceutical companies, related to the environment, and this can lead to uh, uh, toxicity. And uh, we also see this pesticide application. Pesticide is involved, I mean, it's important to help in crop production. But at the same time, if not properly managed, it can lead to residue on the food substances and even absorption by plants, which can lead to uh, death of organisms that consume, including human beings. Now, exposure to chemical substances can affect different organs. Multiple organs can be affected, and some chemicals are specific. So when we see that some are reprotoxic, they may not affect other, organisms, other organs, but we can see the effect on this. So these are health consequences of exposure to environmental pollutants. And as a toxicologist, with a policy that we make on exposure to toxicants, how to determine the range that is safe, and also the level that is matter to human health. So technology research involving the use of animal models is indispensable. It's very important in order to safeguard and to enhance human health and as well protect the environment. 
these are the models that I've used so far in my research. I've used uh, rodents, including the rat and mouse. I've used pig, this is a boa. I've used drosophila, cockroach, and then zebra fish. These are the model, and I'll be showing this. Uh, my research story uh, is an important story that I tell anywhere, everywhere I go. And it's very important to make mention of this, my mentor. This is Professor Ebenezer O. Farumbi. That is the number one toxicologist in Nigeria. And uh, I'm fortunate to be trained by him. He's the one that has trained me. When I was an undergraduate, I did my project a dissertation with him. He encouraged me to proceed to master degree, also supervised me. And from there, he encouraged me right on to PhD. And after my PhD, when I became a doctor, then through ESEP, I was able to continue as a professor. That is a lecturer in the department. And the ladder is still on. And up to now, he's still carrying me. I'm still following him. So that is where anywhere I go, I talk about this worthy uh, professor. He's an erudite professor. So I think in, uh, in Portuguese, uh, you talk about the one that has been ready for everything, total. OK? All right. Now, I want to talk about my first exposure, post I mean, uh, postdoctoral training in the um, in, uh, United States of America. And um, my focus, uh, the research focus was in uh, impact of aflatoxin. And we know that is part of a, uh, a contaminant, a food contaminant. How it affects? We slide. The, the slides are not passing on the YouTube, uh, are not going on. I will oh. just check. Uh, Maybe you close this one. It's good now. So, so where do we start? So, from beginning? Okay. No, 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 I don't think so. Sim. 
Silvestre. Ali? E aí? Também? Então. E agora? É que tu tá no YouTube, né? Deixa eu pôr. Agora deu. It's okay now. Because the typing, I never knew. No, no problem. No problem. No problem. It's okay. Sorry for the break in transmission. So, like I said, as a toxicology, the toxicology research involving animal models is indispensable. It's very important in order to safeguard and enhance the human health and the animal as well as protect the environment. And uh, I was talking about my research story that my story is incomplete without making mention of the person that have trained me, who has supervised me all this while. So I talked about Professor Ebenezer O. Farumbi as the number one toxicologist in Nigeria. He supervised my first degree right from when I was undergraduate and encouraged me to proceed to master's and eventually to PhD. And even currently, he's still involved in my academic and development. So I want to thank him for that. And then we move on to my first um, exposure. I mean, in terms of postdoctoral training, I had a pre-doctoral training in India before my part of my PhD was done in India. So, but my postdoc, the first postdoc was done in the uh, United States of America, where I studied the effect of a dietary compound, which is aflatoxin how it affects lydic cell. It was an in vitro study. And uh, from there, we see that the impact of lydic cell, which is basically to synthesize testosterone, was negatively impacted. So using so many techniques, I was able to publish this paper. And then the second exposure in postdoctoral training was in UFSM. At that time, I was uh, a CMPQ a res a a recipient. That was in 2013, just shortly after Professor Abolaji left. I was available, I was here, to be trained by these erudite professors, this uh, Professor Joe Batista and Professor Joe, uh, Jogo Ososa. They are the one that hosted me. And um, by the time I was carrying out my activity, my research using drosophila and cockroach, I came across my friend, Professor Denny Rosenberg, and uh, he just walked up to me, Isaac, how are you? What are you doing? I was trying to tell him that I was examining the behavioral activity of uh, cockroach and eventually introduced me to what is called enemies. That is a software to quantify the behavior of animals. And I want to thank the three of them, the trials, the three of them for contributing to my career progression. So my research focus is basically on three areas. I into reproductive toxicology, neurotoxicology, and environmental toxicology. So in the last 18 years, my research founding and my research uh, uh, work or activity has been on investigating the impact of some common contaminant and the chemotherapeutic significance of dietary bioactive compounds on reproductive and neural I mean, neuro uh, neurological dysfunction. Moreover, I've elicited the biochemical mechanism associated with this, focusing, centra focusing majorly on central nervous system and brain pituitary testicular axis. The first paper that I will show is um, from my PhD, where I check the impact of uh, a cola viron. This is a biflavonoid extracted from Garcinia cola seed. This is on P1, this is the peeled one, and uh, on ethylene glycol monoethyl, this is an industrial solvent. It, it, a report, a I mean, experiment or report have shown that exposure to industrial toxicant, I mean, industrial solvent, uh, elicit uh, reproductive toxicity. So, with the consumption of aflatoxin, I mean, our consumption of uh, uh, colaviron, which contains. Uh, which is present in Garcinia cola seed, I was able to find out that the adverse effect of ethylene glycol on motility, viability, testicular span function, and uh, lipoprotein 
was mitigated by colaviron. And the second, still on the Garcinia cola, we found that it mitigated the hepatic renal and testicular oxidative damage induced in diabetic rats. So the, um, it lowers the uh, blood, uh, blood glucose level, that is the sugar level, at day 7 and day 14. And at the same time, boosted or improved the antioxidant status and also corrected the anomaly induced uh, in uh, endocrine function or the hormonal um, balance. The next paper I'll be talking about is the colaviron, which has to do with, this is a carbendazine, it's a fungicide that is also involved in food preservation. I mean, to keep a uh, plant or product away from fungi, to prevent fungi infection. So it means that if properly not taken care, if it's not, uh, if, the, uh, if the diet is not free of the contamination, with carbidazine, human being can ingest it's a dietary contaminant um, and then leads to results have shown that it causes reproductive dysfunction. So administration of colaviron using immunofluorescent shows that it prevented testicular damage induced by carbidazine and at the same time the stereogenic, this um, western blot, it prevented it and then you have the tunnel as a for apoptosis was a signal mitigator, thus showing the impact of anti-apoptotic effect, the anti-apoptotic effect of colaviron. The next um, bioactive compound I'll be talking about is cisgingerol. Cisgingerol was isolated in our lab by a PhD student. This is Dr. Babajide O. Ajayi, the PhD student that isolated it, and we see they isolated from ginger, and this we have the standards. Administration of this to um, ulcerative uh, uh, colitis mice shows that colitis was induced and uh, we have disease index shown as we can see here. We can see the, blood, uh, the body weight reduced, the colon weight, the, the colon was reduced and we have disease activity index being uh, increased. But administration of cisgingerol at three different doses mitigated against at 50, 100, and 200. And at the same time, we see the inflammatory biomarkers being mitigated upon. So showing us that the beneficial effect of cisgingerol in ulcerative colitis. The next uh, bioactive compound that I tested was using the cockroach. So a cockroach is an emerging model in uh, toxicology presently. And here we admitted and um, we administered methylmercury, which is a known uh, neurotoxicant in, uh, in the diet of the cockroaches. That is a noveta scenario. And um, the finding shows that looking at the locomotion, we see that this total distance traveled was uh, reduced. We see maximum travel, maximum speed was reduced, and the number of falls, because they need to climb the periphery, that is the wall, the vertical aspect of the nova apparatus. So the number of falls increased. But the administration of a bioactive compound, lutoni mitigated again the adverse effect induced by this animal. And this is a track plot, like I told you, Professor Dennis Rosenberg introduced me to this, and it actually is one of the technologies that I can say I've transferred to University of Ibadan. So today, in University of Ibadan and other universities, they have come to know what NMAs is all about. Nobody knew that in Nigeria before. But today, you see people asking, I see, train me, teach me on the uh, use of NMAs. So I want to thank UFSM for that. And the activity of acetylcholine series was actually imparted, adversely impacted by methylmercury and uh, administration of lutonin prevented it. So this was done in the laboratory of Professor Rocha. So we could see that you can use different models and uh, it's very important to see how we can use different bioactive components, I mean bioactive substances in different models just to establish the veracity of our uh, claim in one uh, model. Now the other one is protocatechic acid. 
we show here that dietary protocol acid mitigated the hepatotoxicity induced by ulcerative colitis. You can see that it is possible for somebody that has colitis to also has uh, associated hepatic dysfunction. So, protocatechic acid is a dietary bioactive compound not only prevented the anemia, not only uh, ameliorated the and colitis, but at the same time, the associated dysfunction in hepatic uh, function or the, in, in the liver was mitigated. We can see the colon length has been impacted. And using immunofluorescent, uh, immuno we could see the expression of COX-2 and INOS. These are inflammatory biomarkers. And then, of course, the histology. The next one is uh, quercetin. Quercetin is um, another bioactive component which was reported according to this paper that it prevented manganese-induced neurotoxicity. I mean, of course, we know that manganese exposure to excessive manganese can result in neuro dysfunction. I mean, neurotoxicity. So quercetin prevented this. We can see the occupancy plot and then the track plot. How manganese alone reduced the toxicity, I mean, reduce the movement, the locomotion. And uh, biochemical, we see the liberalization increased, whereas they were reversed and in animals that were treated with quercetin. Another one is uh, in reproduction. In reproduction, we find the role of quercetin in mitigating manganese-induced reproductive dysfunction. Looking at the axis, both inflammatory biomarkers were abated in uh, animals treated with uh, quercetin. Then caspase, which is an executional uh, protease in the uh, induction of apostosis, was increased in uh, manganese alone, in the testes, in the brain, and epididymis. But administration of quercetin alone, I mean quercetin with the um, uh, manganese prevented and uh, abated it. The same thing, the spam function, the spam count and spam auto, I mean the spam motility, they were, they were decreased in manganese treated animal, but reversed in, uh, by quercetin. The hormonal assay was also performed, and we could see the beneficial effect of quercetin. Now, taurine is not a, a, it's not, it's not in plant, but it's also an bioactive component, which is endogenous. It's endogenous, so it's a, uh, um, is an active compound. And here we could see that in terms of hypertension, you could see the effect of uh, taurine in preventing the damages, both in the blood pressure parameters, in um, endocrine function, and also in histology. Now, the next one is protocatechic acid in reproductive dysfunction. This paper was published in the European Journal of Pharmacology, and we could see how dietary protocatechic acid was able to mitigate against, mitigate against uh, toxicity induced by uh, in diabetic rat using streptotoxin as uh, the, uh, the inducer. So here we see that testicular sperm number, daily sperm production were decreased in diabetic animal, but administration of protocatechic acid and um, compared with glabeclement, which is the standard or reference drug, we we'll see that uh, the uh, protocatechic acid mitigated against the, the, uh, the, the toxic effect or the associated reproductive dysfunction. Now, the blood glucose level, of course, reduced. And these are the parameters in summary that we mentioned uh, that we asked for in the in the paper, we could see how the beneficial effect of protocatechic acid. Now, C. gingerol, this is benzoepirin in this colonic injury. We are looking at the colon. Benzoepirin is found in, um, in a barbecue when it is not well uh, done, when it is burnt, sometimes maybe because of uh, we, are, we slept off 
when making our barbecue or something happen, it get God burnt. We are not expected to consume burnt uh, barbecue, but rather we should consume uh, normally prepared uh, that is good. Um, I want to talk briefly on the barbecue which uh, Professor Dennis introduced me to. I knew the first time, the first time I was in Brazil, we were in uh, the kitchen in the biochemistry department, and my wife and my daughter we were there together, and uh, he brought the barbecue. When I tasted it, it was too salty. In Nigeria, we don't consume a lot of salt. So I said, no, 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 no. So eventually, I think he now knows how to prepare good barbecued for me without more salt. So thanks for that. So we could see that Sinji Jero can prevent against colonic injury by via uh, inflammatory, by suppression of inflammatory stress. In a, and here we could see that BAP, when administered to rat, it will induce inflammation and oxidative stress, but Jinjero is able to mitigate or abrogate it, leading to uh, prevention of the toxicity. Now, this protocatechic acid mitigating against um, rep, uh, neurotoxicity induced by diabetics. So, acetylcholinesterase it was induced, it was increased, the activity was increased in animal, in a diabetic animal, but activity of protocatechic acid prevented and mitigated the I mean, suppress the activity. And at the same time, we have the behavioral activity, the behavioral pattern. Diabetic, you can see how it affects the neuropathy. We call it diabetic neuro induced neuropathy. So people with diabetes, if not uh, well taken care of, can lead to neuro dis uh, neuronal dysfunction. So reproduction, here we see uh, RNS being uh, tested for, uh, uh, we assay for it, and then the inflammatory biomarkers, and then the histology. Now, in relation to fish, there was an, uh, this particular uh, paper was conducted because in Nigeria, people go directly to water, waterways to fetch, I mean, to get fish, uh, fish and uh, eat directly. I know, I don't know whether that happens in, uh, in Brazil, I know since I've been coming to Brazil, I've been going to and Super Day, I've been going to supermarket to buy food. So I don't know whether it's up there. But in Nigeria, you see people, they just go to any river to catch fish. So that this particular stream of water, which is actually for public consumption, and that it supplies uh, water to the public. And then we carry out the effect of polychlorinated biphenyl congeners in the animal, I mean the fish. And it was amazing to find out that they contain a level, high level of uh, polychlorinated biphenyls. So meaning that people consuming this fish directly will have the adverse effects of this toxicant in them. And uh, I think um, after the discovery of this, our next our next uh, research was to actually carry out epidemiological study on people actually consuming it, but that has not been done. So we can see the different species that was impacted. Lastly, I want to talk about uh, the last work that I did with uh, Professor Dennis, and this has to do in relation to, uh, I want to extrapolate this to diet. This parfluorooctanoic acid is an environmental contaminant, surfactant that is present everywhere. And uh, during my literature search, I found that it's also present in uh, Brazil. So the imp impact of this is to use a fish model to check the impact on aquatic organisms, especially in fish. And our discovery was that it impacted the behavioral activity of the fish and through a mechanism that involves uh, neuronergic, amicoinergic, and pronergic signaling. And the implication of that is that in fish that are consumed by humans, if they are exposed to this toxicant due to environmental pollution, it may adversely affect some other 
products that may be important. I think the next study to be done is to really show whether to compare the lipid profile in zebra feed that are exposed to PFOA, whether it affects the lipid profile. And I know if it affects the lipid profile, then it may have consequence in the nutritional status of the fish that are being consumed in the, by people. So with this, I want to say a very big uh, thank you for listening. And uh, in conclusion, we have dietary bioactive compounds, improved neuronal colonic reproductive health in models via different mechanisms. And I want to say that collaborative and partnership, I mean, research between uh, Brazilian uh, and Nigerian uh, scientists will go a long way in contributing to the human health as, as we have uh, as we have uh, aimed to achieve in this, uh, my visiting uh, position in this university. Thank you so much. Once again, I thank all the people, all the bodies, the PPG, that is Food Science and Technology. I want to thank the postgraduate uh, in the biochemistry and CMPQ tours, KPIS, then UFSM, and my university, University of Ibado. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Professor Isaac, for your presentation and con congratulations for this. Um, nós temos tempo para algumas perguntas. Não sei se alguém tem algum questionamento ou. Uh, Professor, uh, I, I would like to make some comment on your presentation and to, to discuss about the, the future collaborations. Uh, we have some expertise here in um, the postgraduate program on food science and technology that is uh, about extracting uh, bioactive compounds from food. I saw that you mostly worked with uh, some isolated compounds, sometimes with um, extracts. Uh, we have uh, much of knowledge on other um, technologies to extract uh, bioactive compounds, even uh, some technologies that do not use um, uh, organic solvents, conventional organic clean. solvents, clean technologies. Uh, Professor Juliano Barin, that's here with us, uh, works uh, with a lot of these uh, clean technologies to extract bioactive compounds. So I think that we, we have uh, much work to do uh, in, the, in this field. It will be a, a, a good field to work together. And, and also I think that uh, when working with, with complex extracts, it is um, um, important to uh, know the, the composition of these extracts. I think that you, uh, do you have in, in Nigeria uh, some uh, research group that works with the uh, identification and quantification of these bioactive compounds or not? Yes, they do. Particularly, I don't work on uh, extracts. I use isolated compounds. Sometimes, like I said, the cis ginger was extracted by PhD students. Okay. So, because we ensure that it was extracted by PhD students and we ensure that. But there are, uh, there are professors in my university and uh, particularly in biochemistry department that work on extract. So, identification to identify the particular extract would be. Uh, would be a very good thing if we, the students, can come to UFSM to carry out the characterization of those compounds. I think it's very important. There, you do not have... The yes, we, we have, but like the clean technology we are talking about, we don't have it in the burden. There is nothing like clean technology. We don't extract using clean technology. I know sometimes ago we were in this lab. Yes, last year. Yes. Uh, yes, yeah, sure, basically, and I saw the clean technology. And tomorrow, Professor Hajar will, um, will uh, guide you. Okay. Guide you in that yeah, it will be a very good thing if um, we want to collaborate with uh, people in University of Ibadan so that okay. 
we can do the good characterization of those phytochemicals. And, and also uh, because we are very interested in, in that area that um, these uh, bioactive compounds and their impact in health yeah. and um, and we work with much of uh, food technology um, in the meat area and wine and, and other uh, areas of food technology and some kind of technologies of uh, enriched foods that are developed. May, maybe this kind of, of studies could be um, well complemented by a studies that investigated uh, the biological effects of these yes. foods or extracts in uh, biological models such as those that you work with yes. and so uh, the, it is important that for you know normally when we characterize and uh, isolate isolate and characterize bioactive compounds we need to take the biological activities we need to be sure whether this is actually potent to help in any diseased condition or any toxic, uh, to prevent toxic effect. So as such, we can do in vitro study. From in vitro, we move to other animal models. Using animal model, I think it's very good to do that. OK, nice. Um, mais alguma questão? Alguém gostaria de fazer algum comentário ou pergunta? Juliano. Congratulations again. Uh, and my question is regarding the food waste, okay. because uh, around the world is a problem regarding to do the, a lot of food that is wasted every day. So the question is, uh, how is the situation in Nigeria? Is uh, uh, a problem, uh, for example, here in Brazil, we have some data about it, and uh, we lost around one third of the food that is produced. I don't know the situation in Nigeria. So thank you. Regarding food waste, yes, in, uh, in Nigeria we also experience that. In fact, I don't know the percentage I can give, but uh, I, mean, I may not have the correct percentage to give concerning food uh, wastage. But if I want to say, I would say more than 30% or 40% are wasted. Because one, um, like I said, it's only professors that are face off with the federal government now. There are other people that complain about road network from the farm to the city. When the roads are bad, food products will not be able to get to the farm on time. Sometimes there will be breakdown of vehicles, food are lost. And apart from that, the farmers in Nigeria, most of them, except for the people in the north, most of them, they don't have uh, access to uh, to chemicals, to uh, to fertilizer and other uh, preservative to preserve those. So you find out bringing some of the perishable foods that are already wasted. Then and also in the preservation, in preservation food, like I made mention of in my slide, the department is working on the processing and preservation. So, but we still need we still have. Uh, a lot to do concerning preservation. It's the same thing in Nigeria. There's a problem of food wastage. But I think even when food are wasted, wasted there is what we call um, uh, where we can generate energy, biofueling, that even though it cannot be consumed, but we can generate energy from there. So if we are able to gather food that are damaged, then we can subject them and process them to generate energy as biofuels. So, but the technology is not that in Nigeria. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor. Mais alguma questão? Um, então, o Professor Isaac vai estar à disposição. Ele vai ficar uh, com na, na numa sala no, no prédio do Nidal. Uh, então, já mantive contato com os outros uh, professores do departamento para que desejarem fazer contato com ele ou alunos, a gente a ideia é a gente organizar também um, um grupo de, de conversação para aproveitar a questão do inglês em breve e uh, então vai ficar conosco durante acho que dois anos pelo menos, né? 
Tá bom. Aí uh, ficamos à disposição a partir de amanhã, amanhã à tarde e quinta à tarde. Aí ele vai. Não, amanhã pela manhã, no final da manhã, ele vai estar no NTA e quinta à tarde no Nidal. Tá. Obrigada, então, a todos. Um, com isso encerro. Thank you very much, Professor Isaac. I don't know. Uh, ok. Thank you, thank you. Do you want to? Ok. Então podemos encerrar. Obrigada aos que nos assistiram pelo YouTube.